you're connected to Business Wrap. Find us online at businesswrap.biz, on Twitter using handle AskBizWrap, and on Facebook, just search Business Wrap. And now, Michigan Reimagined with Chris Buck. So entrepreneurs and small businesses drive a significant percentage of our economy. And on Michigan Reimagined, we've highlighted dozens of initiatives meant to assist startups. Today, we'll hear uh, about a brand new pre-seed fund offered through the Michigan State University Foundation called Michigan Rise. Here to tell us more is the Michigan Rise Executive Director, Jeff Wesley, and Director Preem Bodegala. Welcome, Jeff and Preem. Hey, Chris. It's great to be with you today. I appreciate having uh, having us on today to share more about Michigan Rise. Well, we're very excited to hear about it. I was, uh, I've was i uh, read up on it and, and saw the announcement over LinkedIn and a couple other platforms, and it just seems like a great story to tell. So thanks for joining me today. So, it's great to hear. Yeah. So, Jeff, just to, to share with the audience a little bit about this whole envi- um, economic ecosystem here at Michigan State University, you've got three different executive director titles. Can you just give us a crash course as to what they are and kind of how they intertwine? Yeah, um, I do have th- uh, three uh, titles. Um, I represent three of the four entities that are subsidiaries of the Michigan State Foundation. Um, I guess the takeaway from that is we really have a rich ecosystem to support startup and entrepreneurs um, from everything from venture creation and programming to funding. Um, We have a deep bench with uh, a lot of uh, assets to bring to bear, and that's one of the reasons why we just got the Michigan Rise Fund. Um, My leadership role, you know, I really try to align these different entities and the talent and the resources to really to bring them together in a positive way, um, really to impact the entrepreneurs and hopefully to get them to commercialization faster. Um, it's a really cool leadership role, and I'm just grateful to be able to help startups throughout Michigan. Fantastic. Okay. So the Michigan Rise gets introduced. Uh, so who are the stakeholders helping the fund operate, and, and kind of why did Michigan Rise come around? Yeah, it's really not a new fund. It, um, previous iterations were administered by Ann Arbor Spark and Invest Michigan, Um, Our group has been having a lot of success. We recently applied for this fund with the Michigan Economic Development Corporation, and we were fortunate enough uh, to be awarded pre-seed fund number three. Um, The fund really exists to help high-tech, high-growth companies uh, with early stage and gap funding on their way to institutional investors down the road. Um, There's just not enough early capital for startups, so we kind of help with that gap. Um, The support for the fund comes through a collaboration with the Michigan Economic Development Corporation and the foundation. And both organizations are just great organizations focused on Michigan entrepreneurs. Got it. And I would imagine that in these times that we're recording this in September of 2020, that the the coronavirus pandemic probably makes this seed money even that much more important. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, for both Prem and I, we're just really proud to get this fund up and running. We kind of got our track shoes on. We're motivated to do the best with the fund, but even more importantly with COVID, we understand the impact we can have for companies right now and how crucial it is. And so we're doing our best to um, get investments made, help people, and help them get through this very challenging time. So what exactly is pre-seed money? For those not really in this ecosystem, where does that money come in? Yeah. You know, I guess the thing for your listeners, I'd say we're an early stage fund. Terms like pre-seed and seed apply to us. You know, pre-seed really is that money that comes in before angels and institutional investors, which usually come downstream. But we also participate in seed rounds with other angels and other investors because there is still a scarcity of uh, capital out there. So for people, I think the takeaway is we are an early stage fund looking really to support those high tech, high growth Michigan companies. And and I hope we're more than just funding. Um, I think we bring a lot of uh, experience and coaching to bear. And I think that kind of separates us from many funds that are out there. Okay. So now the website highlights areas of investment. So I think it was maybe eight different kind of categories that you seem to be focusing on. What you know? So can you share with us a little bit of maybe what they are and why they are um, what you deem to be the, uh, the the disciplines you want to focus on? If I can take this one, Chris, um, thank you for the question. So the the areas of investment pretty much cover the gamut um, and are uh, basically Michigan strategic fund requirements. These are, um, you know, basically a reflection of the heritage of Michigan and also areas 
um, the MEDC administration wants to focus on. They include um, advanced automotive and mobility, advanced manufacturing and materials, ag tech, um, alternative energy, homeland security and defense, um, information technology, both hardware and software, um, life sciences, uh, including therapeutics and medical devices, and um, other innovative technologies. So pretty much, you know, that covers most high-tech investment areas. You know, areas we would not look to invest would be um, things like restaurants, you know, contracting um, companies, et cetera, that are not um, commercializing a disruptive technology. Got it. Okay. So to skip around a little bit, are there the restrictions as to who can apply or what are there minimum expectations? I mean, it sounds like they need to be kind of in these fields that you just uh, laid out to us, but yep. um, what, what what's the process for them to apply and, and what kinds of things do they need to, to adhere to in order to be considered? Sure. Um, maybe we'll, we'll uh, start with the process. Um, so we encourage companies to work through their local smart zone. Um, there are about 21 of those smart zones across the country, um, which are basically local economic development units. So uh, we encourage companies to work with them uh, to provide an email referral to us, or they can submit a contact request through our website at michiganrice.com. With the help of our partners at the MEDC, we are pretty well connected with all the smart zones and the other business acceleration service providers such as SBDC. And a warm referral from one of these partners can be very helpful as they would have prepped and um, um, you know, prepared the companies about our program and its requirements. Um, just a kind of a brief timeline from initial contact to investment should we move forward is um, 8 to 12 weeks, uh, but it can vary um, depending on company readiness. In terms of restrictions or you know, minimal expectations, um, these are basically requirements of the Michigan Economic Development Corporation. Um, we require that key founders and majority of uh, full-time employees in the company must be located in Michigan. Um, the company should be set up as a for-profit LLC, C-Corp, or an S-Corp. Um, it'd be less than seven years old. Uh, we do have a um, minimum match uh, requirement uh, for our investment, whether it is um, through another investment or grant funding. Um, company should be beyond, um, you know, the concept or an idea phase. Um, they should have a minimal, um, minimum viable product. Um, and also, it should have a tech-enabled or a high-tech component. Got it. Okay. Well, that sounds pretty comprehensive. You know, you talked a little earlier about these smart zones. Can you tell us a little bit about what a smart zone is? Yeah. Uh, the smart zone, I think, is a, you know, a basic local economic development unit is how I look at it. There's about 21 of those, um, you know, UP and Lower Peninsula. Um, and these are um, kind of the drivers of the economic engines. Um, in their areas. So the ones that kind of come to mind um, would be um, Michigan Tech, MTech, uh, Smart Zone up in Houghton. Um, um, you know, Grand Rapids has um, its Smart Zone um, leap here locally, um, Tech Town in Detroit, Ann Arbor Spark, um, and in several others. And we've, um, you know, Jeff and I in our roles have worked with all these um, Smart Zones in helping um, startups um, get the resources they need uh, as they move forward uh, towards commercialization. Got it. Yeah, Chris. And, and if people don't know where those smart zones are, they can go to the MEDC website. They're listed on there. All 21 of them are there. And we will be pretty active with uh, continuing to communicate with them and coordinate with them as we try to really have an impact on the entire state with this fund. Okay. So as uh, so, you get these applications coming in, and you, you talked about I think it was a eight to ten week vetting process. Prim, is mm -hmm. that okay. so? That's who correct. who does that vetting process? Is it the two of you, or do you have a board, or how, how who decides who gets the funding? Sure. Um, so we have a, a team of uh, four people at uh, at Michigan Rise, uh, just myself and our uh, two fantastic uh, new um, colleagues, um, NASA um, Gamala and Hunter Kettering. Um, so all four of us eventually kind of make the decision to invest. On the front end, you know, once we get the application, NASA and Hunter kind of do the um, um, heavy lift on kind of screening the companies for fit with our program. But uh, once the you know, companies meet uh, the minimal requirements, we will work as a team to, um, you know, talk to the companies and, you know, um, work through the investment process it, it, you know, but the time frame, you know, eight to 12 weeks, some could be 
sooner that gets to investment, uh, and some could take longer depending on the company readiness. Um, and um, the things that we would ask for should we go into diligence would be things like um, you know, historical financials, um, you know, pro forma uh, for three or five years down the road, um, a cap table, which basically details ownership in the company, um, prior investment documents, if any, um, organization formation docs, whether LLC, NLC Corp, that sort of a thing, um, intellectual property information, what is your sales pipeline, um, are there any intended or ongoing um, pilot customers, um, customer referrals, and that sort of a thing. Okay. And, and yeah, we, have quite, we have quite a few things. We can walk people through once they get to that stage. And then we have a governance committee that's uh, represented from individuals around the state that review our investment recommendations and approve them. Um, So it's a quite elaborate process um, that we put in place. And I was just going to put a pitch in as we develop this fund, we want to contribute to local economic development. These two individuals that we brought on for analysts, one we recruited, which is a, a, a young lady that was an ex-Spartan that was on the East Coast working in venture, and we're bringing her back to Michigan. Hmm. Um, and, and the other individual is a young man that we got from the West Coast that we're bringing from Idaho back to mid-Michigan to help us. And he was part of a program that um, give it a lot of credit. It's Venture for America. It's an awesome program um, with young individuals looking to learn and be part of venture. And so I just think that's really cool. So. So as we're starting this fund up, we're impacting future leaders and trying to develop them and bringing talent back to mid-Michigan. Um, to me, that's that's a win-win. Absolutely. No, that's a great story. I didn't realize that was the case. So the um, the applicants, the, the successful applicants are, are receiving, are these grants? Are they loans? Or are they kind of trades for shares in the, the company, assuming it hits? Or how does that work? That's, that's a great question, Chris. Um, so we will be making investments um, in our portfolio companies through equity or um, convertible debt or safe instruments. Uh, these will not be grants, um, just to answer uh, the question. Okay. Um, our, our investment will provide uh, Michigan Rice basically ownership in the company, whether immediately or in the near future when um, those um, uh, investment instruments convert to equity. Um, we will fund up to 250000 per company. Um, typically in tranches according to milestones and uh, management's demonstration of their ability to execute. Okay. So uh, how are you measuring results? What, what results are you hoping to see? What does this look like down the road? Sure. Um, so, so Michigan Rise has a hybrid thesis um, combining both investment results as well as economic development. So as all investors, we want to see the value of our investment in portfolio companies grow over time towards a big exit. But also, um, economic development metrics are important, and we will be tracking these uh, with the portfolio companies, um, including you know, number of jobs they've created, number of jobs they've retained, um, funding leveraged from other investors, um, grant funding, um, product revenues over time, uh, products commercialized, um, patents applied for and granted, among a few others. So pretty comprehensive list there, but those would be um, the kind of economic development metrics we would look to uh, track. Excellent. And then the space, uh, these companies are already up and running, right? So do, do they have their own uh, footprint somewhere and, and the fund just helps them kind of continue along? Or you don't house these people in a facility that, that's owned by the University Foundation, do you? We can do both. Um, depending on where the company is located, you know, a lot of them have uh, locations already or facilities. Um, but it is an issue, obviously, that comes up with uh, with every every startup is space. So we're fortunate enough that we have connections throughout the state. If they need help with that, we can help them with that too. Fantastic. And so, is this fund uh, expected to sunset? Is there a period of time that this is going to be live and active, or is it going to be replenished and kind of continue in perpetuity? Uh, we're looking to do good work. We're hoping it's going to be an evergreen fund. You know, we're looking to take the um, uh, build upon the partnership with the Michigan Economic Development Corporation for several years. We're looking to reinvest the returns that we get from Michigan Rise um, and put them back to work. So we we hope this fund will just continue to grow and thrive for many years to come. Excellent. And Preem, I think you mentioned the website before, MichiganRise.com. Is it really that simple? It is that simple. We were, I, I couldn't believe it that we were still able to get it. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. And if, you, 
And if you check it out, I, I encourage people to need, uh, check it out. I think it was put together really nice, and it just reflects Michigan. It's got water. It's got sunrise. Um, it represents entrepreneurs and the hard work they do every day. Um, so it's a pretty cool website. So check it out. Excellent. And I did find you on some social platforms. Michigan Rise is findable where? On LinkedIn, I think I saw it. Yeah. Yeah, we're on LinkedIn. We'll be out there. We'll do we will do social posts to get the word out. We'll be doing a lot of education through the smart zones. You'll see us at a lot of exciting events coming up, even like the Michigan uh, Angel Event Summit coming up. Uh, you'll see us out there, but please connect with us. We're looking to build relationships and just have a huge impact. Fantastic. We've been speaking with Michigan Rise Executive Director Jeff Wesley and the Director Preem Bodegala. Thanks for joining me, gentlemen. Thank Thanks, you, Chris. Chris.